Well, hey, new Star Wars, but it's a streaming show, so by now we all know the deal. They let the press see exactly four of these up front, so they can technically be reviews, but it can only be from the basically first half of it where all the setup and this looks promising is kept. You know, so whether it all comes together or not just kind of becomes an afterthought, unless you're in an ecosystem that's actually paying critics for multiple day of reviews for TV shows in 2024, which, uh, if you know any, please maybe let a critic you know, huh? We're all very, very hungry. For the record, if you came here only to find out whether or not it's good, yeah, at least the first four I watched were pretty good. Most of these are pretty good. I think I've made it clear that that's my stance so far. The general tone this time is the standout for me more than the narrative. It's basically an attempt to do a wuxia kung fu story, not just with the choreography, but with the type of genre storytelling you'd find in like a, you know, a 70s something ain't right at the Shaolin Temple action movie. It makes more sense when you see it. You know, but with Star Wars stuff, so that's fun. Characters are decently engaging. They're all new characters. I like Thing. You know, so you actually have to watch to know who and what you're supposed to follow, unlike a lot of these where you just work out who's supposed to be someone important's grandfather or nephew or whatever and go, oh, okay, that's what's up and hit the autopilot. I call that a win myself. Regardless, we all know the other deal, which is that talking about Star Wars on the internet or especially YouTube in any way that might resemble normal human interaction is basically pointless now because there's an entire apparatus of fake right-wing news that only exists to make up dumb culture war bullshit about big IPs to grind traffic numbers via angry losers who all look like less in shape versions of me. And in this case, apparently the drones wearing people mask set has apparently already received instructions that episode three of this one is where they're supposed to get angry, and having seen that episode, nope, spoilers here, it took me forever to figure out what they could possibly be mad about, and then when I did figure it out, I just felt exhausted trying to imagine the amount of extra work it must take to deliberately read any piece of media so disingenuously just to make yourself fucking mad about it. Or or do the mental gymnastics that the disingenuous readers in question will demand you do to be mad about the idea of it secondhand? <laughs> anyway, whether you're hate-watching because devout anti-fandom is now the performative scab that's formed over the pus-oozing wound of your own lack of recognizable human value and or purpose in the world, or you're watching because you're a person and it was either on or of interest, Disney got you money anyway. So for the record, the deal here is that we're jumping back in time about a hundred years pre-Phantom Menace, aka the High Republic era. I think that's what they've decided this is supposed to be called now, which doesn't really mean much aesthetically, except the Jedi have a white for indoors robe thing going on, and at least up front, some of these are new to the screen characters, swinging around the laser swords and saying the made-up space talk. On the meta level, it feels like not only a prequel to the prequels, but also a what if the prequels were good remix of Attack of the Clones specifically, in that it's a whodunit murder mystery, wherein the Jedi are trying to solve some crimes while the storyline nudges the audience to solve whether, given the history of the franchise, the fact that any of this is a mystery in the first place to the space wizards who can read minds is because the bad guys are really good at conspiracies, or the good guys are really incompetent all the time. At least until you remember that this is a Star Wars, so the answer is both. It's always both. With as few spoilers as possible, there's an assassin who maybe has force powers or something like the force powers, killing their way down a list of specific Jedi at the behest of an unknown and unseen master. Amanda Stenberg is our main character. She's a former Padawan who quit before getting full honors because of Star Wars reasons, who gets accused of the crime but swears she didn't do it. But then through various complications, she's soon along for the ride to hunt down the real killer along with her former teacher and ex-academy buddies. And if you're thinking there's maybe some connection between the murder targets and her very gradually spelled out mysterious backstory that only some of the characters were fully aware of to begin with, hey, congratulations, you've seen a TV show before, and you're also probably too old for that to be a serious complaint if you're watching anything with a Wookiee in it. Now look, guys, I joke around about that kind of thing because it's fun and it's not like the reviews actually make or break anyone's watch on these, but also, sincerely, like the rest of these, it's on the pretty high end of pretty good. They're doing nifty new things with the action, there's some potential that the mythos gets some kind of shaking later on, and if you actually give a damn about that, cool. If I had to lay down some kind of comparison, maybe it feels like an attempt to cross Andor's all-business seriousness and the character focus with Ahsoka's, wow, look at all this lore approach, and we probably need the whole thing to finish to say whether or not that's a good idea. I'm at least intrigued to know who's under the bad guy helmet and what else isn't telling about which is a lot more than I can usually say for these. And also, just, I, I don't usually drop like rambly personal anecdotes into the reviews, or at least I try not to, but this actually is relevant. The 
past weekend, I happened to be at a uh, family function. It was someone's anniversary, not important to the review. Hanging out with family you don't get to see very often, having a drink, having some food. People there basically know what I do for a living. Someone asked me, hey, uh, have you seen uh, new Star Wars stuff? At the time, not yet. What do you think of the new Star Wars stuff? You know, I said, honestly, after, you know, some hemming and hawing, I think that I mostly come down on it being, yeah, pretty good. Uh, which usually, in the circles I run in, is when people say, Oh no, you gotta have like a really binary opinion, it's either gotta be terrible or not. And uh, this person happened to say, uh, Yeah, yeah, pretty good, that's uh, that's about where I'm at on these. Yeah, they're pretty good. And this is someone who actually does watch all the Star Wars stuff, but is not necessarily someone who watches all of the Star Wars uh, adjacent bullshit on YouTube. Lucky them. And that was basically the level of back and forth. What did you think of this one? Hey, there was a Wookiee. I liked that. Hey, Boba Fett was there. I liked that. Hey, they did different lightsaber stuff in that one. That was fun. Sometimes it's also kind of average, but like mostly you're getting Star Wars beamed into your house as like a bonus on the app that if you're of a certain age, it's likely that you have because your kid wants to watch Mickey or whatever. I saw some lightsabers. There's a Wookiee. It looks like there might be some, you know, hey, oh, that's new for Star Wars stuff coming in. I saw some people complaining online because there's a thing in the trailer about someone having like a lightsaber that's a whip. First off, I don't care if that doesn't make sense. Nothing about lightsabers makes sense. But also, that sounds fucking cool. We haven't seen cool new stuff with the lightsabers since, like, uh, what, the spinny propeller thing that they pulled in from the games, and that was an Obi-Wan. And uh, remember how awesome it was when the first time you saw the, the two-ended one in Phantom Menace? That almost made up for the rest of Phantom Menace. Apparently, there will be even more different lightsaber stuff in this. I'm kind of excited to see that. And also, there's like a little guy who looks like a, a beaver wearing a space hat. He reminded me of hundreds of beavers, which is still the best movie this year. And uh, that was a great thing, too, just to be reminded of it. Honestly, after Zack Snyder lit all of that Netflix money on fire to helpfully show you, me, everyone else, what an actual, outright, dog shit, terrible Star Wars movie would be like, I feel like everything else in the franchise probably deserves an additional point or two, at least. I'm not even fucking kidding, really. Do you want a quick, easy, positive review of this in just six words? Zero minutes spent harvesting the grain.